hi everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well guys pause the video go grab a drink grab a cup of tea grab a glass of wine whatever you need because this is a step-by-step -step on how to create the most perfect ocean and ocean waves if you remember the last video i showed you the microwave flower press that was sent to me by resiners I actually dried out some lavender and some purple flowers and so many of you suggested I do a purple ocean and that is what really inspired this alongside the purple lavender that I dried in the last video. I cannot tell you how chuffed I am with these results. This is by far my favourite ocean I've ever done on my channel so if you are interested in epoxy resin oceans and ocean waves please stay tuned because after this video you are going to be able to recreate exactly what i'm showing you first up we're gonna paint our wooden boards now the canvas you use is entirely up to you i'm gonna be painting the board in purple i was tempted to add in a little bit of green to pull out the green from the lavender stems, but I decided against it. I've got two boards here. One's around 20 centimeters, but this one here is around 30. And I just thought if I'm gonna do this, I need to go big. So all I'm doing here is painting my board. I'm painting my board with lots of different purples and a little bit of white at the bottom. The white at the bottom is where I'm going to be laying down my lavender flowers. And really I'm doing this for two reasons. The first reason is to prime the wood. You don't wanna put epoxy resin on straight away onto wood, it will soak in, it will be a bit of a mess. And the second reason is I am, I'm priming it, but the purple paint is going to act as a background. So if you are creating a resin ocean, then any gaps won't be seen because the actual board itself is the same color as the ocean. I hope that makes sense. Basically, if there's any gaps in my resin or any areas of transparency, then you won't just see a brown wooden board so this works really really well to prime make sure you get those edges because this resin is going to be more of a flood coat design we are going to be flooding the piece which means resin will go over the edge so if you are priming your board however you're doing it make sure you get those edges don't worry about the underbelly we're going to deal with the underbelly I will show you how I deal with that in a moment I'm just going over with a second coat of paint again I'm only doing it in the colors because of the color of the ocean you can paint it any color you want now guys I have to share this with you this video honestly again kind of sponsored by Jdiction they sent me a leveling board now I am so sorry I've had this a few weeks but if you've been with me a while, you'll know that my surfaces are not that even. They're not that even. I live in a very old house. Um, J Diction sent me this leveling board and it is absolutely perfect for resin oceans. If you do want to do a resin ocean, the way I'm doing it here, you need a flat surface. It's imperative and a flat surface is one thing I don't have. This leveling board comes with a tool to adjust the feet. It's got wibbly wobbly feet, so you can really adjust it. And it's got this miniature spirit level right in the center of the board. This really helps you understand when your board is completely flat and that's gonna give you a totally flat surface to work on. And honestly, I don't think I'll do another resin ocean without using this leveling board. Now this is optional, but I think if I'm using this for flat work, like if I'm using coasters or if I'm making bookmarks or pendants or anything like that, I actually cut a silicon mat up to fit the leveling board. This is just to protect the leveling board. So once you've got it level, put your silicon mat over the top to protect it for the duration of its life. However, we are going big. We're going messy. This is messy. So I have put a huge sheet of polyurethane over my J Diction leveling board and it goes over the board and onto my desk by a good 10, 15 centimeters because of all the spill off. The spill off is real in this one. <laughs> Now, we just got to hope that my roll of tape is flat because I've rested my board down on a roll of tape to get it up off the board. 
I'm gonna be using the Let's Resin Fast Cure 4 Hour Resin. Now, the reason I'm using this resin is because so many of you asked me, would this resin be good for oceans? Well, we're gonna find out today. We're gonna find out together. Then I went through my stash. I found every purple mica powder that I have. And again, you will need heat tools. These are imperative for oceans. You will need your culinary blowtorch. I got mine from Lidl, center aisle <laughs> at Lidl. And you will also need your heat tool. These two things are vital for resin oceans. You cannot make an ocean without heat tools. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm separating out my resin into all of these individual cups. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that this resin is full of bubbles. Right now, I'm not gonna get rid of those bubbles. I'm not bothered about them because this resin is gonna be a real shallow pour. And I'm gonna use my hands to spread it out and we're gonna torch a lot. There's a lot of heat and a lot of torching when it comes to resin oceans. So at this moment in time, those bubbles do not phase me. I know they're gonna be gone. So again, I'm using multiple different purples and I'm also using a white mica powder for the bottom of the board. Whatever ocean you're doing, whether it's a sunset ocean, a very typical bright blue, all the, all the different blues, kind of deep ocean, light blue turquoise oceans, this will work for you regardless. So even though I am doing a purple ocean because that was the most requested, remember that what I'm doing is just an example and you can take this and run with it in your chosen color scheme. I think this would be gorgeous also in like a Halloween, black, gray, purple, gothic kind of style. So yeah, whatever colors you choose are up to you. The reason I'm using mica powder is because mica powder gives us the most beautiful shimmery effects when it's cured. It's got gorgeous texture to it, patterns to it. If you use a plain, um, a kind of, what's the, what's the word? Opaque. If you use a plain block color opaque, it does not give you, it doesn't. It doesn't give you that, oh, wow, look at that kind of result. Um, they just don't do the same thing. So here you see me with my gloved hand on, I'm smushing the resin into each other. I want these colors to blend as much as possible. I'm also encouraging the resin to go off of the edges, but not too much. I'm not, I'm not here to waste that much resin. I don't want to waste resin, but with oceans, I am much more comfortable and much more confident doing resin oceans on a big, wide, flat surface area with spill off. That's where I get the best results. I'll tell you right now, guys, I am really no good at epoxy resins that are in uh, oceans that are internal. By internal, I mean, if I was to do this in a mold, I can't get the same results. I just cannot do it. Like pendant molds, keyring molds, all of that. Coasters, I can't get the same results internally. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> For me, spill off. I'm calling this, okay, let's start from the beginning. I'm calling these spill off ocean waves. I'm better at spill off ocean waves. Waves that are allowed over the edge of your piece. I'm not very good at internals. I hope I'm making sense. Now, the pattern you leave in your resin is entirely up to you. I'm really putting this resin to the test, adding loads of heat. I'm almost to the point of overheating. I'm pushing the resin out. I'm trying to get all the colors to blend together so it's not so obvious. You can use your fingers to create those swirly patterns. You can use lollipop sticks or silicon tools to get some swirly swirlies in there. I decided to use my heat tool and look, you can see here, this is called a fish eye. We definitely don't want fish eyes. That's where I pushed the resin too hard and I dried it out. I dried it out. I used way too much heat in one spot. I then filled up the bottom again with more of that white resin just to cover up that burnt out spot. So already I know, we know not to hold your heat too close, otherwise, you will dry out and burn the resin. That's not just this resin though, that has happened to me before with other resins. And now it is time for our lavender beach. Here's the thing, I know, <laughs> I know that a lavender beach is not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. 
I've honestly not seen this done. So I figured, you know what, let's just do it. Art is art and that's the thing. So I know some of you might be thinking, oh Claire, this is such a cool idea. I've never seen this before, how pretty. Some of you might be thinking, what? <laughs> Why lavender? Why lavender? No, 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 no. But I, it was something I really wanted to try and I am utterly in love with the results. So I've laid down our lavender. Now the lavender has got lots and lots of brown in there, lots of purple flowers, lots of brown leaves and brown and green stems. So all of those colors are just so, so rich. I've poured a little bit of resin over that lavender just to kind of like secure it in there before we do our very first wave in a few hours. Again, just go with the flow and trust the process on this one. This is what the lavender are looking like. If you missed the last video where I pressed them, definitely go back, check that out. I'm loving them, I'm loving them. Two hours later, I'm top coating. We're not doing waves at this point. I am just giving the whole board a top coat of clear resin. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to bury those lavender flowers a little bit more. You saw them in my um, microwave flower press video. The lavender definitely didn't come out paper, paper, paper thin. Like they're not as thin as a sheet of paper. They definitely got flattened. They got flat, flat, <laughs> way flatter than I expected them to be. But they're definitely not paper thin. So I just want one more clear coat on top of those lavender just to give them something extra on top before the next step. So again, using my gloved hand to go over lots of heat lots of heat, lots of torching. We're not holding our flame too close. So if you are using your torch, do not hold it against your resin. Don't put it down and press the button and hold it there. You will burn your resin, you will make it smoke and you will turn your resin yellow. So when we say torching, we wanna, we wanna really like briskly rub our hand over the surface of the, of the thing with our torch. We don't want that in one place. It's time for the first wave. The first wave is entirely up to you. If you want to pretend that this lavender is sand, then go for it. Um, I want my first wave just on the edge of the lavender. So remember when you're mixing up the next few resins, don't make too much as you go along because each wave is smaller. For this step, you will need white alcohol ink, white pigment, your heat tool and your blowtorch. Now there are so many ways to create resin waves. I'm just showing you the favorite, my favorite, the best way that I know how to create resin waves. That is what I'm showing you today. Again, there are so many ways to make resin waves. So into a small bit of resin, again, this is the Let's Resin Fast Cure, a dash of the white pigment and three drops of white alcohol ink. The white alcohol ink is going to encourage those cells. It's the cells that I love so, so much. Again, how you do this is up to you. You can actually buy a product that also encourages and introduces um, wave cells. And I know I'm having some sent to me soon, so I really look forward to using that. But again, my first wave is going to be just kissing, literally just kissing the edge of those lavender stems. Now here is the beauty of the leveling board. If I was doing this without the leveling board, even though this resin is thick, I know for a fact my wave would have come down and taken over my lavender because that is how uneven my table is. So the leveling board is really coming through for me right now. So here you see me, you can just see the edge of the wave. Now we're going to add that white. So that white is, like I said, a drop of white pigment and three drops of white alcohol ink. We're adding this to the very edge of our clear resin. We're not putting it on, right on it. We want it right on the edge. So we want it to just grab onto. So we're lying it right along the edge where the clear resin is grabbing it and saying, okay, you belong to me. We're not putting it on the dry cured resin. Okay, that's one big tip I can give you. At this point, 
just put as much down as you want you can either do a nice thick fat juicy wave or you can do really really thin line I've put quite a lot on here again you don't have to do this much how much you add is up to you I am now blasting the whole area with a torch and I'm leaving it we're not rushing this I'm leaving it I've torched along my white edge and after about 30 seconds you start to see your cells appear already still at this point I'm not touching it. I'm not forcing it. I'm allowing the resin to do its thing. I'm allowing that alcohol ink to do its thing. At this point, it's around about a minute later, the cells have formed and it's time to blow my wave. So it's time to blow our wave. We're going to use our heat gun for this. When we blow our wave, we're blowing at an angle. So we're coming in at anything 45 degrees or under you can go parallel to your board do not bring your heat gun directly down from the ceiling on to your resin waves don't do that i am right now at around about a 30 to 40 degree angle hitting that white line getting that white line pushed out into the rest of my clear resin And again, if you don't like the look of your wave, if you don't like the direction it's going in, just give it a minute. Give it a minute. Take a step back. You can manipulate it so it comes back. If you think, okay, it's gone too far. I don't want it that far out. You can actually tilt your board so that that resin pours back down towards the beach area. Or if you want it even further out, you can let it go further out. You can also blow it back. So right now, I'm just bringing it back a bit with my heat gun. How you work, this is up to you. But that is how I have created that whole entire um, wave. But here's the thing. We're not finished yet. We're going to whack it again with the torch. Adding the heat from the torch at this point is introducing even more cells. You have to just let it sit. You have to let those cells develop. Let it do its thing. Don't overwork it. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't overwork it at this point because I'm guilty. I will, I've will. i done resin waves before where immediately I'm like, no, absolutely not. That has not gone to plan. Hate it. Don't like it. Pour it off or pull it towards me. Push it away from me. And I was overworking it. I wasn't allowing the resin, I wasn't allowing the alcohol ink in that white pigment to do its thing I wasn't allowing it to just develop and kind of like build into this beautiful absolutely beautiful wave of multiple cells absolutely not I was just not liking it but that's the thing that's the key thing if I give you one thing here it's allow the resin time to do its thing let it do its thing I love this first wave so like I was saying earlier if you're not happy with where the wave ended up you can tilt your board towards you or tilt your board away from you to get that wave either tighter so you get much tighter cells or you get big wide open cells by tilting the board away from you I hope that really helps. I hope I'm making sense as well. Let me know if my step-by-step instruction is actually making sense because (laughs) the last thing I want you to do is go, what, Claire? What, what, What are you talking about? The first wave I was so over the moon with, I created cells that I've never been able to create before. Those big, that big kind of white ocean, that pattern where the wave crashes, I've never been able to do that. The second wave... Again, up to you where you put it. You can put it hugging the first wave or you can leave a couple of inches gap. You can put it straight through the middle, diagonal across the board. It's entirely up to you. If you didn't want to add a second wave at this point, you can also leave it there. We're going to start with our white, three drops of alcohol ink and a drop of white pigment. Mix, mix, mix. That's the other thing. Get that mixed so, so thoroughly so that the white alcohol ink is truly in with the white pigment. 
My second wave, I decided to go and do another wibbly wobbly around about the middle of the canvas. But again, where you put your second wave is entirely up to you. In the same way that I wasn't worried about bubbles in the first wave, I'm not worried about the bubbles in the second wave because again, we're using so much heat in this project that those bubbles will just automatically and naturally come out with the amount of heat we're using. I am encouraging my resin over the edge. Now, if you are worried about spill off, you can reuse spill off. If it's beautiful color, you can use it and create pendants with it. You can put it in open bezels. There's so much you can do with it. If it is plain and clear like this, then you can actually just put it in plain resin just to get it used. So try not to worry too much about the waste. It can be reused. Another blast with the torch, again, just to encourage those bubbles to come out. And then we are going along the actual edge of our clear resin. Back with the torch. I am blasting back and forth, back and forth over that white line. And already, already you can see, I'm showing you my hands here. Just count, count to like 50. Let it, let it do its thing. Just sit back, count to 50, let it do its thing. And the cells will appear in front of your very eyes. This is all before adding the heat gun. So before we add the heat gun, we're going back again with our torch, giving it a minute. We're just saying, okay, we're gonna give you a minute to do your thing, create these cells, and already we can see these cells are forming. That is what is gonna give us beautiful ocean waves. Now here's an example of what I was saying earlier. You can tilt the board away from you if you want them to kind of stretch further out into the deeper ocean, or you can tilt the board towards you if they've gone too far. Bring them back, bring them back towards you. Now this time around, I'm holding my heat gun much closer to the board. So much more parallel to the board. I'm not coming in at a 30 degree angle at this point. I don't want this wave to go too far. I actually want it a lot tighter than the first wave. The first wave is that very typical wave that you see hit in the beach with all of those beautiful white kind of, you know, wave edges. What do you, what do you even call them? I don't know. But this wave is going to be a lot tighter. So I've blown it out with my heat gun very parallel to the board. Another blast of that torch and already the cells are incredible. Another tilt. We can tilt this so that it goes right out or we can pull it back towards ourselves to bring that wave back if we think it's gone too far. Now again because I'm using the leveling table I'm not having an issue with my waves traveling. That's an issue I've had in the past where my table has been uneven and when I, I've poured a wave that I'm really, really happy with and then the next day, the whole thing has been taken over by one wave and that's because my surfaces are uneven. So the leveling table definitely helped here. I am absolutely over them. I cannot even explain to you how happy I am with these ocean waves. They are by far the best waves I have ever created here on my channel. Now, as the video plays, you will see cards linked in the top right hand corner of the screen of other ocean waves that I have created on my channel. One of my favorites to date is the black ocean. I created a black sands, black ocean with white waves. Definitely one of my favorite. Okay. A few hours later, time for the third wave. Now, you can do as many waves or as few waves as you want. This board, I think, was crying out for three waves. Again, where you put your third wave is up to you. I decided to go straight across, like as straight across as I physically could. Um, again, leaving a gap of a similar size between all three waves. So it's not really that uneven. Using my heat gun again, I'm just moving the resin around a, this is going to soften it up, helping it flow. B, it's going to help it go over the edges, which is going to give us better waves. And C, it's going to get rid of even more of those air bubbles. So quite, quite a go. I did go over quite a lot with the heat gun. And then same thing again. Three drops of alcohol ink, one drop of white pigment into that cup for our edges. I love, <laughs> I love these waves. You can already see here. The, the white line that I've just poured 
is very different to the two white lines that I poured previously. This is the thing with resin. Resin does what resin wants. Sometimes waves go right, sometimes waves do not, do not play. And today they just went right. A few blasts of the torch along that white line and look already, it, 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 already it's creating some of the most beautiful cells. If you wanted to at this point, you could walk away. You could just walk away if you wanted a nice tight wave like this. But again, I am going to build it out. I'm going to encourage it to go out into the clear resin. That's the other thing to mention here. I've done oceans in the past where my second wave has got color in it. If you are using color in your resin before you lay down your white line, you really need to lay down a line of clear. That was something I forgot to mention at the beginning. If you are putting, say, purple, if I added purple into this final wave, then I really want to lay down my white line onto clear resin. So lay down your purple, lay down some clear along the edge, and then the white over the clear. That's another way of getting a nice crisp edge. But what I really love to do is just put my resin down first, all of my colors down first, one big colorful resin base, and then all of my waves are clear resin. That's my favorite way to do it. So again, I'm just showing you how I do it. Now I'm going to show you something I'm not good at, something I can't do, and that is internal waves. By an internal wave, I mean this. Some people are so good at this, guys, I cannot. I have not been able to master it. I don't like the effect it gives me. I love creating individual ocean waves one at a time letting that cure going back in for a second ocean wave letting that cure and then going back in for a third i am no good at doing multiple waves in the same wet resin layer and here's why look at it <laughs> to me it looks like a fuzzy caterpillar it looks like i am hooked up to a heart monitor in a hospital and my heart rate is 182. That is what this looks like. I've never been able to get good internal waves. That's what I call an internal wave. I hope I'm also making sense on that one. But it's also the same for an internal mold, like a mold that has a wall around it. I'm also not so good at doing resin waves in a mold that has a wall like coasters or trays. It's just not my thing at all. But if this is your thing, then I really hope this has helped you. Honestly, these are some of the best waves I have ever created and I'm super, super chuffed. Now, the one thing I don't really think I talked much about is the fact that this is a wooden board and I didn't paint the background. I didn't support the background. What I did do was cover the edge of the underbelly in masking tape. What this does is it prevents any of that resin drip off from clinging to the wood. If this got on the wood, it would stay there until you physically sanded it off. It is a nightmare. So make sure if you are using a wooden board as a canvas to protect the outer edge with your tape. Now, the next day it's time to peel it back. This is similar to resin waves. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not easy. Um, sometimes you can really get a good grip and they all just fly off. Other times you just have to use a heat gun just to kind of make it a little bit more pliable so that you can pull off that tape. Again, the tape has saved the back of the board, so I would fully recommend doing this. You can't really put latex or PVA directly onto the wood because it wouldn't peel off. It is, a, it is an actual porous surface. So the best method for a wooden board truly is masking tape. I'm not going to take you through this whole step, but I did paint the background purple just to pretty it up a bit. The board is battered. I've had this board a few years. It is covered in mess. And just to cover that mess, I painted it in purple. As for the leveling board, the polyurethane sheet has protected it like a dream. It is still brand new. It did the job. So massive thanks to Jade Diction. If you are interested in the leveling board, the details will be in the description box below. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Not a drip at all. And the actual spirit level in the middle is still bang on. This is something I just... <laughs> I could not get. You have to just adjust the feet to make it work with the surface that you're working on. 
But here is the ocean. Here is the lavender beach. It's very, very different. But art is art. And I just felt in my heart it would just look crazy different. Unlike anything I've done before. And just so, so special. The waves, the cells, everything about this project I am so, so proud of. And I hope that my step-by-step -step instructions on how to create these waves and these wave cells has really, really helped you. But do remember, the instructions I gave today really are for flat work, like big flat canvas boards with the resin going off of the edges. I Again, I'll say it again, I'm not, I'm not your girl. I'm not your girl if you're looking at how to do this in coasters. I'm not the one. The only thing I can suggest is making the coaster and then taking it out and doing the waves on top. Now that I could do. <laughs> create your ocean, demold the coasters, and then create your waves on top. I can get behind that because then the waves are going to be pouring off of the edges. Let me know your thoughts. Again, this was a very long one, but I hope, I really do hope that my voiceover was clear, that my instructions, my my kind of point by point instructions were really, really helpful to any of you that are really looking at trying resin oceans or have tried and you weren't happy with your results. But I also do need to uh, reiterate, <laughs> resin does what resin wants, guys. I might not be able to recreate this tomorrow because the resin gods are not on my side. <laughs> there have definitely been days where my resin oceans have not gone to plan. This was a good day. This was a good day, the best day. I'm over the moon. I'm chuffed. I'm in love. And I hope you have really loved it. I will see you in the next video. Bye.